right now, Eyewitness Sports. Good evening, I'm Brennan Miller with Eyewitness Sports. Utica is becoming a hotbed for international competition. The IIHF Women's World Ice Hockey Championships coming in just a few months in April, and the World Box Lacrosse Championships set for September. Then there's another world title, although it may not be being held in the city, that still remains with close ties. The United States national futsal team is preparing for the 2024 CONCACAF futsal championship in Nicaragua in April with a camp that will start this Sunday the 14th in Rome, Georgia. Now you might be asking why is that relevant to Utica? You may also remember that Utica City FC head coach Everton Marrera was named as the head coach of this team as well last fall and so all roster decisions are up to him. With that, he'll be taking two of his boys in blue to camp this year to gear up for the CONCACAF tournament, one who has made a few caps for the team already, and another who will be making his international debut. Those players are Frank Tayu and Nilton De Andrade. Tayu with five caps for the national team, going back to 2016 with a single goal scored, and De Andrade making his debut if he is to play in any of those games in April. Regardless, both will be at camp along with Everton, with six other players from the MASL, three from the Texas Outlaws, and one apiece from the Baltimore Blast, Milwaukee Wave, and Empire Strikers. So that team won't play until April. Today, though, some Atlantic Coast Conference women's basketball being played. The Syracuse Orange heading down to Winston-Salem to play the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. And the receiving votes women leave with a pretty big win. 21 points the difference in a 77-56 final on the road. Naisha Fair leads the way with 21 points, also grabbing seven boards as her team moves to 13-2 and two on the season so far, 3-1 and one in conference. The Orange got 15 votes in the AP poll this week after dropping a game to receiving votes North Carolina while ranked number 25, that game on January 4th. But they've now beat Boston College and Wake Forest since then, so with a game back at the Dome on Sunday against Clemson, there's a good chance that they break back into that top 25 if they can take down the Tigers. There was a big game tonight in the high school ranks as well. The West Canada Valley boys hosting Hamilton in about between two top 15 teams in Class C in the state. The visiting Emerald Knights one spot higher at number 12, while the home Nighthawks number 13. This is a huge game going forward. Both teams trying to claim that top spot in the Class C standings with sectionals just on the horizon. West Canada's Cam Ludwig also just 30 points away from 1,000 in his career. Hamilton started this game on a run, opening up with a 12-2 lead that stretched to 20-6 to at one point. A lot of those coming from Bryce Wright, up and under Eurostep there for the basket. Nighthawks relying on their 1,000-point man, though, Cam Ludwig from three. He hit six of them in the contest, including a few down the stretch. But the Emerald Knights, too strong, up and one off the steal for right. But the biggest moment came with just 11 seconds remaining. Ludwig needs two points for 1,000. Last chance to get it at home, and he does. On the drive, up and under, gets it to fall. Only two ticks left on the clock as he gets to 1K and 30 points on the game. Hamilton gets the win by 10 in the end, but the big story, Ludwig, the third 1,000-point score in as many years for West Canada. Here's what he and head coach Dave Smith had to say after this game. Feels amazing. Very happy. Glad I could get it home with all the fans from hometown. Couldn't do it without my teammates. Just grateful for it. I'm super thankful. I got a bunch of unselfish teammates, and uh, we were drawing up plays just to get that last score, and uh, I'm thankful for them and that they helped me out with that. As a coach, wanting to get it at home. It's a little more special when he gets it at home. Um, and, you know, he just kind of, coach went trying on two, which made it difficult. Uh, obviously, we were, we were still making a run. He's trying to win a game. We're trying to win a game. But when he made that turn and went down the lane, it was really special. I mean, Cam's a special kid. Cam has been with me since a freshman, and, you know, he played behind Will, and then he played behind Braden a little bit last year, and, and he's really embraced his role as a leader. So what makes it special, I mean, um, he just works extremely hard in practice. He's our leader uh, off the floor. He's our leader and the kid is just um, he's resilient and it's uh, it's fun to watch him and he's going to have a very special year. I mean, I think he may even break our, our single season scoring record. I mean, just he's on pace to do it. So, I mean, he scored 60 points in the last two nights. So he's uh, he's playing very well right now. This Canada has their next chance to bounce back on Monday when they travel to Tully in a non-league matchup. So how about that for Cam Ludwig? Oh, he becomes, good. I think, the sixth 1,000-point scorer among the boys yeah. in, uh, in the Mohawk Valley this season. Needed the entire game to do so. Only two seconds left on the clock when he finally gets that 1,000th wow. point. Wow, and you got that shot there, that zoom up on him when he was on the ground. <laughs> yeah, you know, you want, yeah, I know that he had been, uh, in the last minute, he needed 
I think six points. Uh. He, had, he had a three, and then and it then ended up being that that last two right at right at the tail end. It was it was a really really good finish. You definitely wanted to see how he was going to react yeah. after he actually got that. Yeah. Point. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Brennan. Yep. Coming up next after the break next week, parts of the federal government will run out of money unless.